better, happier, more productive, comfortable. Ooh, this was the opening words of another word. My apologies. The video about to start contains a great many details and subtexts. This video was not prepared to please music lover internet users or musicians but in the name of music only. Audiences who define music as detail or those who do not like subtexts are kindly asked to leave the channel. To leave the channel. To leave the channel. To leave the channel. Thank you. I met Franz Klein in 1960 in Provincetown, Mass, where I had gone to study with Hans Hoffmann. Hoffman was one of the prime movers in abstract expressionism, the only true American art form. Franz Klein was another huge name in that movement. What he did was so simple and so brilliant, it was like all of Western civilization had worked its way through centuries of discovery, only to find itself back at the very beginning, back to basics. How basic? Klein only allowed himself one color, black and the white of the paper, but he added in all of the compositional learnings of the ages. Now, you students are going to find, much to your surprise, that you can create very good Franz Klein, which tells us this, once a real big idea is discovered, it is easy to imitate. There's broadcast signal coda intrusion. Close encounters of the pirate crews. Sea songs and shanties kind. A pirate arterial station is a broadcast stunt flying that operates without a lass associate do spectacle license. What, what is, is a coda? coda? The society of the spectacle purpose. A piece of music at the end of a longer piece of music. Usually separate from the basic structure. The coda is often more, more technically, technically difficult than the rest of the piece. piece. The importance of, of the two factors of scale and of gesture in abstract expressionism are exemplified in the paintings of Franz Klein, usually with a white background and then either only with black or with black and some other dark colors in a very sober, somber, but very strong key. We have canvases that present I think perhaps a very American idea in terms of the expansiveness of the landscape, in terms of the bravado of the new. It's easy to make generalizations about how certain American art differs from European art. But in the case of these paintings by Franz Klein, I think it's actually, it holds true. The abstract expressionists saw what they felt were the elegant qualities of European art as something that needed to be replaced with painting that focused on a certain rawness or brutality even that seemed to exemplify the new world. Scale was one way they were making paintings, not that you could paint on an easel, but that need to be painted on the floor or just have the canvas tacked on the wall of the studio because these were paintings that were bigger than the human arm span or height. And instead these were paintings whose scale was going to engulf you. They were not paintings that you were going to dominate either as a maker or a viewer. And similarly, you're not going to have a polite brush stroke daintily made by holding a brush in one hand, the palette in the other hand, but instead the kind of forceful gestural strength that means that stroke was made not just with fingers, not just with a wrist, not just with an elbow, but with the whole arm and probably even the whole body. And when you look at those marks on a Franz Klein painting, you have the feeling almost of bridges in America or railroad tracks or these other parts of the country that were typical of the technologies and the industry that had set 
America apart in the 19th century. Franz Klein was one of the regulars at the Cedar Tavern and really a collegial member of the abstract expressionist group. I think we hear a lot of stories about how solitary they were in their struggles or how moody they were as they wrestled with their art. But in fact, that wasn't always the case. There was oftentimes real camaraderie, real helping of each other at difficult stages. And Franz Klein was one of those who was the most supportive and really inspiring to the painters and sculptors around him. Around 1960, when Franz Klein had started selling some paintings, making some money, he'd been working almost exclusively with house paint. Now, Sidney Janis, his gallerist, didn't like that idea so much, perhaps because he was looking for fine art prices, not hardware store prices. So what he did, actually, one night, was to break into Klein's studio, take all of the house paint, and replace it with Windsor Newton fine art grade paints. Well, the next day, Klein came in, said, what is all this? Took it out of there, went back to the hardware store, got some more house paint, and went back to work. So why was Klein so enamored with house paint? Well, because it's cheap, because it's kind of crass, because it's kind of consumerist, because it's not fine art. Uh, all of those are on the table. How about the material itself? Let's take a look in the studio. Looking at the paint in the can, it looks quite different from artist quality paint. It's very, very fluid. Uh, it dries to a very, very hard, very, very flat and high glossy surface. Things that were all very seductive to Klein, in addition to the velocity of paint that could be pulled across the canvas with a brush with this paint, because it is such a low viscosity paint. Looking at Franz Klein's painting called Chief from 1950, you might be surprised to learn that just two years prior to the making of this painting, Klein spent most of his time in the studio making figurative drawings and paintings of things like furniture, chairs, for example. Well, around that time, Klein visited his friend Wilm de Kooning. Now, de Kooning invited Klein over to show him a new toy, a projector, something that could enlarge a drawing or photograph many, many times up to the scale uh, of, say, a wall. Now, Klein, at that time, was drawing these chairs, if you will, uh, on the pages of a phone book, and when he projected these onto the wall, he realized that they were so large that no longer could he see the chair. Uh, in fact, he couldn't even read the numbers and letters of the phone book page. Instead, he had abstracted uh, black on white, or in that case, yellow in the phone book, abstracted images out of his source material, again, drawings and the numbers and letters in a phone book. What Klein saw was something that looked a little bit like this. It was a transformative moment for Klein, and he realized that the abstract language that he wanted to pursue was based on that, figure on ground, or in this case, black on white. Now, when Klein decided that he was gonna become an abstract painter, it did not mean that he was done with drawing. In fact, this painting, which looks very spontaneous, it looks like it perhaps could have been done in just half an hour, maybe even less, actually was the result of careful studies. Klein made abstract sketches and then quite carefully transferred those sketches onto this large-scale painting, again with fast, dripping enamel paint. But it's still one layer more complicated because this is not simply black on white, because this is actually black on white, but then white back on top of the black black back on top of the white again. It's an iterative process, uh, giving and going, if you will, between these two colors. One step further, we're not talking about just one color white, for if we look here, we have kind of a cool, crisp looking white, and if we look here, we find a much warmer uh, white color. Paintings like this are often referred to as action paintings, because we can almost imagine the painter as a kind of dancer whose movements in front of the canvas are recorded in time and space. Franz Klein is one of the most important artists of the 20th century. He was part of a group of artists who came to prominence in the late 40s and 50s, who became known as the Abstract Expressionists, or action painters. Klein's method was to express through brushstrokes, through large scale, and through gesture. Franz Klein was born in the coal mining town of Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Klein's father, Anthony Klein, descended from Hamburg, Germany. He owned a local saloon in Wilkes-Barre. His mother, Anne Klein, was an immigrant from Cornwall, England. According to Klein's mother, Klein grew up drawing on sidewalks with the juice from the stems of rhubarb 
find work as a designer for a department store in Buffalo. Then in 1939, the Kleins moved to New York City. In his early days in New York, Klein worked briefly as a window display designer for women's fashion, sold illustrations to magazines, and painted murals for bar. And all through it, he continued to paint. Jackson Pollock, Willem de Kooning, as well as Mark Rothko, along with well-known writers, Allen Ginsberg, Jack Kerouac, and Frank O'Hara, all publicly praised Klein's work. This helped Klein to be accepted in the group and began establishing his reputation. Klein began to visit the museums and the galleries and from his new surroundings and from his new, more worldly and more sophisticated associates and compatriots, his ideas about art began to evolve. He made this experiment with abstraction in 1947. He did a painting of a rocking chair which led to him experimenting with abstraction from the drawing for that chair. Then the chair, a bit more gesturally done, and then completing his idea, the rocking chair became just brushstrokes. This was an important painting. It broke him free and helped him to move away from figurative art altogether. After this, he gave up figurative art and focused on black and white large-scale abstraction. It wasn't long after Klein began making the black and white paintings that he began using house paints to make his paintings. His gallery director at the time, Sidney Janis, didn't care for the idea of Klein using house paints. They were less permanent than fine art paint and tended to crack more easily. So Janis went to Klein's studio when Klein wasn't there and replaced all the house paint with fine art quality paint. Well, the next day, Klein came to his studio, didn't like what he saw, went to the hardware store and bought a new set of house paints and went back to work. Klein preferred the house paint because it was less expensive than fine art paint, perhaps because it was somewhat crass, perhaps because it was more of the blue collar world and didn't have the elitism of fine art paint, but mostly he liked its shine and its fluid quality. This beautiful painting by Klein, executed in 1955, is considered by many to be one of the masterpieces of his paintings that utilize color. In 1958, Klein was selected to be included in a major exhibition by the Museum of Modern Art in New York. It was called The New American Painting. It included the most important artists working in New York and around the country. The show toured eight European cities. In 1959-60, Klein got back into some color work. In 1961, Klein did this powerful black and white and color combination. 1961 also saw Klein paint this painting, Scudera. 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 Scudera.